The Colossus and Majestic classes were the first aircraft carriers of many navies, and they were the last for some. The Colossus and Majestic classes were two different models of the same class. These light fleet carriers played important roles in many important battles. They have changed the perspective. Now, we're investigating the legendary Colossus class and Majestic class, the pride of many navies. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also known as the 1942 design light fleet carrier and the British light fleet carrier, the Colossus and Majestic classes are among the most important vessels of the modern naval history. Eight nations commissioned this ship. Some of them waved the flags of three different nations in their service time. The Colossus and Majestic classes definitely left their mark on the First Cold War. However, they were the child of the Second World War. At the beginning of the Second World War, the Royal Navy realized that it had to increase the number of its aircraft carriers. The Admiralty began a project on a new design in the mid-1941. Because building a large number of big fleet carriers were economically and industrially impossible. The escort carriers, which were designed only for convoy protection, could only perform a secondary offensive role. Also, their low cruise speeds were preventing them from accompanying the high-speed cruisers and battleships. The converted merchant ships did not have enough aircraft capability. The Royal Navy needed a new design. The new ship, defined as the intermediate aircraft carrier at first and the light fleet carrier later, would be simple and expandable. So the commercial shipyards could build them in a short time. To shorten the time of the design phase, it would be a scaled-down version of the illustrious class. The propulsion systems would be the same as those used in the Fiji-class cruisers. London approved the project in February 1942. The first ship of this class, HMS Colossus, was laid down one month later. She was launched in 1943 and commissioned in 1944. In one year, the UK laid down another 14 vessels. Initially, the Royal Navy had planned that each ship would be ready for service in 21 months. But while the construction work continued, the design was modified. Therefore, the construction time increased to 27 months and only four Colossus-class aircraft carriers could participate in the war. As we mentioned before, the Royal Navy had planned to own 16 Colossus-class ships, but the UK built only six of them. Two additional ships were completed as maintenance carriers. During construction works continued, the Royal Navy decided to equip the last six ships with the upgraded catapult, arrestor cables and lifts, and reinforce the flight deck. With these modifications, they could handle faster and heavier aircraft. Also, these aircraft carriers would have more advanced weaponry and radars, as well as the capability of replenishment at sea. This modified variant was redefined as the Majestic class. Five of them were completed, and one, whose name is HMS Leviathan, was not. The first ship of the Majestic class, HMS Majestic, was laid down in 1943. She was launched in 1945. But because the Second World War ended, the ship was not completed for a long time. Actually, the Royal Navy never commissioned a Majestic class aircraft carrier. The Royal Australian Navy bought HMS Majestic. She was commissioned in 1955 as HMAS Melbourne. Argentina Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, India, the Netherlands, and the UK operated these ships. During their service life, the Colossus and the Majestic class aircraft carriers were constantly modified and upgraded. And they had different general characteristics. Also, the general characteristics of each ship had changed over time. But if we look at the general characteristics as designed, the complement of the Colossus class was 1,050 person. Its empty weight was 13,200 tons, while its fully loaded displacement was 18,000 tons. The ship had a length of 212 meters, a beam of 24 meters, and a drought of 7.09 meters. Four 10,000 horsepower Admiralty three drum boilers provided a maximum speed of 25 knots. 
the Colossus class could reach a range over 22,000 km with an economical speed of 14 knots. The Majestic class had the same dimensions as the Colossus class, but it was 1,500 tons heavier, so it had a drought of 7.54 meters. The Colossus class could carry 52 aircraft, yet over time the Colossus and the Majestic classes began to operate heavier jet fighters and anti-submarine warfare aircraft, so carrying capacity decreased. The Second World War vintage aircraft carriers had a single flight deck. Sometimes the aircraft could not catch the arrestor cables or the arrestor cables could fail to stop the aircraft. So, for safety reasons, the flight deck had to be cleared during landing. However, clearing the flight deck was not always possible in war conditions. It caused many devastating accidents. Clearing the flight deck did not always prevent the accidents. In some cases, even though the flight deck was clear, some aircraft hit the island. To solve this problem, Dennis Campbell, a Royal Navy captain, developed the angle flight deck design. By the beginning of the jet era, this design became more important. The jet fighters had higher landing speeds and needed a longer distance to stop. Thanks to the angled flight deck, an aircraft carrier had two long flight deck. The angled flight deck was first tested in 1952 on the Colossus class aircraft carrier HMS Triumph. These aircraft carriers had no armor, so during the last stage of the Pacific War, the Royal Navy operated its four Colossus class ships outside the range of Japanese kamikaze aircraft. But during the Korean War, the British Colossus class aircraft carriers were baptized with fire. HMS Triumph was one of the first ships deployed to Korea. Her aircraft participated in the first carrier attack of the Korean War. They also provided close air support at the Battle of Incheon. The first jet landing on an aircraft carrier was performed on HMS Ocean. But during the Korean War, this ship operated the piston-engined Sea Furies. HMS Ocean was deployed to Korea twice. Its aircraft conducted numerous important ground attack and close air support missions. In 1952, the Sea Furies, which took off from the HMS Ocean, shot down a MiG-15. HMS Glory was deployed to Korea three times. But the busiest Colossus class ships of the Royal Navy was HMS Theseus. The aircraft carrier was deployed to Korea 10 times. During her second patrol, the aircraft of HMS Theseus conducted only combat air patrol missions. Because the ship's catapult was broken, the aircraft could not take off with heavy ground attack weaponry. Yet, until the end of January 1951, the Sea Furies of the HMS Theseus carried out more than 1,000 sorties without any accidents. During the Korean War, the Royal Australian Navy deployed its Majestic class aircraft carrier HMAS Sydney. In August 1951, the aircraft of the ship carried out 147 sorties in two days. During the second patrol, one aircraft of HMAS Sydney was shut down behind the enemy lines. Later, the pilot was rescued by a helicopter from the ship. During the war, the aircraft of HMAS Sydney carried out 2,366 sorties. Ten of them were shot down. Later, during the Vietnam War, HMAS Sydney was used as a troop transport ship by the Royal Australian Navy. But before, the French Colossus class aircraft carrier had already been baptized with fire. In 1946, HMS Colossus had been loaned by the French Navy. She was renamed as FS Aromange. Two years later, the ship was deployed to Vietnam to support French ground troops in the First Indochina War. In her first patrol, the Dauntless and Sea Fires of the FS Aromange carried out 152 sorties. Later, France deployed the ship in Vietnam three more times between 1951 and 1952. During the 1956 Suez Crisis, three Colossus-class aircraft carrier fought against Egypt. HMS Ocean and HMS Theseus conducted the first ever large-scale helicopter-borne assault from the ship. Their Whirlwind and Sycamore helicopters landed 425 British commandos and 23 tons of supplies into the port set in 90 minutes. During the war, the F-4U Corsairs of FS Aromanche bombed the airports around Cairo. 
The Royal Canadian Navy commissioned three ships of these classes, but none of them served together. One replaced the other. They served as anti-submarine warfare carriers to protect the North Atlantic sea lines against the Soviet submarines. The Royal Netherlands Navy bought HMS Venerable in 1948 and renamed it as HNLMS Carol Dorman. During the West New Guinea dispute, the ship was deployed to the region. To deal with HNLMS Carol Dorman, Indonesia acquired TU-16 bombers and AS-1 canal missiles from the USSR. But the Netherlands and Indonesia implemented a ceasefire. The aircraft left the area. Later, HNLMS Carol Dorman served as an anti-submarine carrier like her Canadian sisters. In 1968, a fire occurred in the ship's boiler room. In the same years, the Netherlands was planning to decommission HNLMS Carol Dorman due to budget cuts. So, the aircraft carrier was sold to Argentina after refit. She was renamed as ARA 25 de Mayo and replaced her sister ARA Independencia. During the 1982 Falklands War, the aircraft carrier provided air cover for the Argentine landings on the islands. After the invasion, the Royal Navy sent HMS Splendid nuclear attack submarine to hunt down ARA 25 de Mayo. On April 23, 1982, HMS Splendid detected the target near Puerto Belgrano. The submarine was very far away from the exclusion zone, so it was not permitted to attack. ARA 25 de Mayo was unaware of the danger. On May 1, 1982, the ship attempted to launch a wave of six A4s against the British task force, but the wind prevented the takeoff of the fully loaded Skyhawks. One day later, HMS Conqueror sank ARA Fenol Belgrano cruiser. Now, Argentine Navy realized the danger. For the rest of the war, ARA 25 de Mayo waited at the port. India purchased the Majestic class incomplete HMS Hercules in 1957. She was commissioned four years later and renamed as INS Vikrant. The ship participated in the annexation of Goa that same year, but did not see any action. During the 1965 Indo-Pakistani War, INS Vikrant was in the dry dock. But six years later, she had a chance to prove herself. During the 1971 Indo-Pakistani War, INS Vikrant fought on the Eastern Front. The Pakistan Navy had anticipated this move and sent PNS Ghazi submarine to hunt the Indian aircraft carrier. Initially, this move prevented INS Vikrant from acting comfortably in the region. But the PNS Ghazi sunk because of an unknown reason at the very beginning of the war. And this was a big relief for INS Vikrant. The Seahawks of the ship attacked the ports of Chittagong and Cox Bazar, sunk or disabled most of the ships present. Later, they bombed Kulna, the port of Mongla, Pakistani barracks in Chittagong, and destroyed many anti-aircraft guns. INS Vikran had a key role in the Pakistani defeat. The last ship of the class, NAEL Minajaris of the Brazilian Navy, was decommissioned in 2001. In the beginning, the Royal Navy had projected the Colossus and the Majestic classes as a disposable aircraft carrier, and after the war, they would be scrapped. But their fate was different. The Colossus and Majestic classes served in eight nations' navies. They fought in important wars. They protected the sea lines of the free world. These ships proved that an aircraft carrier was not a luxury of the superpowers and relatively small countries could have these type of naval vessels. Their achievements have made the Colossus class and the Majestic class a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button.